Hello, I'm Jonathan Watson, pastor of Cape Fear Presbyterian Church. Grace and peace to you from God, who was, is, and is to come. Welcome to this week's worship service from my kitchen table. Let the Lord's name be praised. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we turn to your word for us, may the Spirit of God rest upon us. Help us to be steadfast in our hearing, in our speaking, in our believing, and in our living. Amen. Hi, this is Jennifer Gentry, and this is a reading from Psalm 42. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng, and led them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you. From the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mitzar, deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock. Why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me continually, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. You may not be all that familiar with Norwegian expressionist painter Edvard Munch, but I'll bet you've seen at least one of his works of art. The original German title given to it by Munch himself translates as The Scream of Nature. The Norwegians call it Shriek. It's more popularly known as The Scream. The artist once recalled his inspiration for it, saying, I was walking along the road with two friends. The sun was setting. Suddenly, the sky turned blood red. I paused, feeling exhausted, and leaned on the fence. There was blood and tongues of fire above the blue-black fjord and the city. My friends walked on, and I stood there trembling with anxiety and I sensed an infinite scream passing through nature." End quote. For the last hundred plus years, 
Munch's agonized face has become one of the most iconic images of art, seen as symbolizing the anxiety of the human condition. The reason I'm showing you this famous painting is because it relates to a question someone asked me recently. In all sincerity, this person wanted to know if, if given all that's going on around us and in the world, did I ever just feel like screaming as a way of releasing all of that tension? The simple answer is yes. And as I got to thinking about it, I realized that this question is emblematic of a great deal of underlying anxiety and frustration that I suspect resides in most, if not all, of us. It's fair to say that we're harboring a great deal of emotion these days. This week alone brought not one storm to the Gulf, but two, including Hurricane Laura, the strongest storm to hit the coast of Louisiana in 160 years. Living where we do, we know all too well what the residents of that area are going through and lift up in prayer everyone who has been affected. We can also add to our collective emotional plate the continuing effects of the pandemic. We worry over our children parents, and loved ones, the economic implications, and whether things will ever get back to normal. As a nation, we continue to experience the difficult yet necessary push towards racial equality and navigate another divisive election season. And these are just the broad strokes you may be dealing with other, more personal things that are equally worrisome to you. One place to begin to address our shared exhaustion, anxiety, frustration, and worry is the Psalms. And more specifically, a particular subset of Hebrew poetry known as the Psalms of Lament. In these passages, we discover the psalmist often literally and figuratively screaming at God. Let's take a closer look. A lament or lamentation is a deep and passionate expression of sorrow, grief, or anger, usually in response to the intense pain of injustice, tragedy, or loss. Other cultures, notably those in parts of Africa and the Middle East, have preserved public expressions of lament. Our culture, however, has not. Instead of allowing ourselves to grieve, we often run from it, bury it, and, and even hide from others who are grieving. The Psalms of Lament provide an outlet a model for the healthy expression of this pain. We hear the psalmist crying out to God to express his or her dissatisfaction about life, a particular event, or even God himself. You're probably more familiar with psalms of lament than you realize. Recall these examples. Psalm 18, verse 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. Psalm 27, verse 7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Psalm 28, verse 2. Hear the voice of my supplication as I cry to you for help. In Psalm 13, verses 1 and 2, attributed to David, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Even without knowing the background issues, you have probably felt like the psalmist at some time or another. 
Psalm 42, which Jennifer read for us earlier, is another good example of a psalm of lament, offering a guide for how we can reclaim this practice. First, a lament exhibits a yearning for God. In Psalm 42, we hear this in verses 1 and 2. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. The psalmist wants to know God deeply. He or she wants to surrender himself or herself to the Lord's will. Likewise, when, when we are facing despair, we reach out to God as the anchor in the storm. When everything around us seems like it's falling apart, we want and need the steadfast love of the Lord. Similarly, a lament expresses humility. When we recognize that we're in need of God, our, our prayers assume a humble stance. In Psalm 42, we hear the psalmist lay bare his or her ego across several verses humbling themselves before the Lord. In verse 3, the psalmist declares, My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? Third, when we lament, we need to be truly honest with ourselves and God. In addition to yearning to see and be humble before the Lord, the, the psalmist is honest about his or her true feelings, holding nothing back. In the second part of verse 6, the psalmist admits, My soul is cast down within me. And in verse 9, My God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Fourth and finally, and, and this is so vitally important, when we lament, we should also express a hopefulness. While it's evident that things may not be great for the psalmist at the moment, he or she believes that God remains faithful. In verse 5 and again in verse 11, we hear the psalmist return to hope. In the midst of his or her confession about feeling cast down, the mood shifts. And the psalmist declares, Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my help and my God. The poet understood that the future belonged to God and that the Lord would make all things right in His timing. So the psalmist is able to say, I shall again praise Him. In the New Testament, it's the Apostle Paul who reminds the Christ followers living in Thessaloniki that yes, Christians grieve, but they do so with hope. Author Josh Larson wrote, Christian lament is not simply complaint. Yes, it stares clear-eyed at awfulness and even wonders if God has gone. Yet at its fullest, biblical lament expresses sorrow over losing a world that was once good alongside a belief that it can be made good again. Lament isn't giving up, it's giving over. When we lift up our sorrow and our pain, we turn it over to the only one who can meet it, our God. End quote. Friends, it's it's okay to lament. In fact, it's even okay to scream before God. God can handle our frustration, sorrow, or rage. We can count on the Lord to be present and loving no matter what. As the author of Hebrews declared, the Lord has promised to never leave us or forsake us. We can trust God to be with us in our anguish. In the words of the psalmist, weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Scripture tells us that creation groans with labor pains, waiting for healing and redemption. And the Spirit groans alongside us. We do not know how to pray. There are not words to express all that we feel. And yet we hold on to the promise that God is with us. And we bring all that we are and the people that we love before God. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather virtually in worship, offering our praise, yet also acknowledging there is pain in our midst. In whatever situation we may find ourselves, you graciously welcome us into your presence. We can also admit that it is not always easy to say these words, and there are times when we cannot. While we yearn to trust in your promise, we have experienced the reality of lies, deceit, and dishonesty. Some of us have been left wounded by the words and actions of others, so much so that our voices fall silent. Sometimes all we can do is cling desperately to hope as life around us changes. We pray for those among us who are in transition, those who are mourning losses, those who are sick, and those experiencing the turbulence of the seasons of life. Today, our hearts are heavy with the pain those in Louisiana and along the Gulf Coast are facing. We also weep with those who are hurting and those who have lost loved ones as a result of coronavirus. We are a mix of emotions confusion, anger, sadness, exhaustion. And so we cry out to you and we bring our prayers to you, silently or aloud. May this community be a place of safety for them and for all seeking refuge. May we find comfort and rest in your word. In all manner of things, when praise resounds from our lips, when pain silences our souls, and all moments in between, your love endures and sustains. Give us the faith to trust in your love and hope in your word that all will be well. Receive all our prayers, O God, in the tenderness of your mighty hand, and strengthen our hands to serve you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our worship ends, but now our work begins. May the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, and the ever-present fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Mm-hmm.